Welcome to this demonstration on how to draw dog eyes and muzzles using pastel pencils and soft pastels. I have already transferred this drawing to my pastel mat paper using some graphite transfer paper. This way I have a clean image to work with without erasure marks on my surface. Erasing on pastel mat seems to create a lot of smudge marks when I try that, so that's why I always transfer my images this way. I will be primarily using my Stabilo uh, Carbothello pastel pencils to establish my base layers for this dog portrait. I'm going to speed this process up a little bit as I lay down my base layers of color. And then once we are ready to uh, develop the dog's eyes and muzzle, I'll slow this down so it's easier to follow. Some of the darkest values are around the edges of the ear and along the backside of his head. I will intensify some of these areas first and then shade the inside of the ear with a little less pressure. I'm switching to a very intense uh, magenta color, it has a little bit of a purplish tone to it to fill in the inner area of the dog's ears. I am overlapping some of this black shaded areas to blend some of his ear color with the dark fur that lines his ears. I'll add a touch of amber to the light spot in his ear. I'm using some navy blue where the light is being cast into his ears. So now I'd like to begin blending some of these colors together. I am using a paper stump to blend this color into the paper. I find that these work very well on pastel mat to push and blend these colors together into the paper. Pastel mat will accept many layers of color, but it's important to add some pressure while blending these colors to establish it in the very base of the paper. I am going to continue using my black pastel pencil to shade and contour the dog's face. I am applying light pressure as I block in the areas of his black fur. I am also applying my strokes to the natural pattern of his fur. I'm starting to add a little more intensity to the darkest values in the contours of his face. I'm going to locate his pupil and then darken the area around his eyes. The side of his temple is a darker shade and as I do this you can begin to see how it contours his forehead. I'm going to blend this area with my paper stump into the paper. 
This brings out the dark and light values in the dog's fur. Next, I will slow this process down as we develop the dog's eyes. I have popped up my client's picture so that you can follow along more closely. I'm using a very dark magenta for the corners of the dog's eyes. I'm going to add a little bit of dark gray and then blend it with my paper stump. Next, I want to outline the dog's iris with my uh, very dark uh, gray pastel stick and lightly cover the area where there is a reflection in the dog's eyes. I am defining his pupil placement a little heavier and darker with my black pastel and try not to darken in the highlighted areas too much. I'll map in his pupil on the right eye also, and also being careful not to fill in the highlight on the eye. I'm switching to a light gray to map in the highlighted area of his eye. And I'd like to blend this area a little bit with my paper stump. This small paper stump works very nicely when blending very small tight areas like his eyes. It's very important to have a very sharp pastel pencil. So I've sharpened my black pastel stick and I'm going to um, outlined his iris and little areas around his eyes with a little more sharp detail. Now that I've established a couple of layers, I'm switching to my rubber tipped blending stick to blend the colors together. This type of blending stick blends the colors without removing the pigment from the paper. These small rubber tipped uh, blending tools are really essential for creating a smooth, realistic uh, eyes and features. I am drawing his pupil and trying to place a thin line between the highlights at the top of his eye. I'm adding some dark brown to bring some color into his eyes. Now that I've completed the pupil in his right eye, I want to add some more color to saturate the colors within his eyes. I'm using a very dark purple to contour his eye. It's important to use a combination of colors to create a rich saturation that is more realistic. The sunlight penetrates the dog's eyes a little bit, so I want to add a lighter color of a light brown to the very corner of the dog's eyes. I'm going to bring in a little bit more of the dark magenta to the corner of his eyes and blend these colors a little bit more. I'm going to blend some of this darker color into the bottom lid of his eye to remove the white uh, paper. 
I'm also adding a little bit of dark shading just below his top eyelid. I'm going to continue shading and contouring the dog's face. Again, paying attention to the direction of his fur. He has some very dark fur just around the top of his eyelid. I'll add a little darker shading just beneath his eye. I'll add a little bit more dark fur around the edges of his ear and he has some heavier fur extending on the inside. I'll blend this area with my paper stump to establish a base layer. going to darken in some of the fur in his forehead and especially around the brow area to bring it out um, with greater contour. I've begun shading in his nose and muzzle area. I had lost a small clip of uh, my drawing here, so I apologize. But now I'd like to switch from my pastel pencils to my pastel sticks. I've switched to a very dark plum color to add more color to the dog's ears. The large pastel sticks apply a heavier saturation of color. It's very difficult to achieve this kind of uh, density with just pastel pencils. I'm using a lot of pressure to blend this color into the paper. You can see as I blend this area that the pastel is much heavier uh, and thicker on the paper. I am switching to my very black pastel stick. I believe this is from my Dick Blick um, pastels and you can begin to see how rich and dark the pastel stick is. So here I will intensify the darkest fur in the dog's ears. Even though the pastel may seem rather heavy, the pastel matte paper will still accept several layers of more pastel. Once I achieve a good saturation and heavy texture in the dog's fur. Then for the, one of the last steps, I'll be able to come back and add individual fur texture and highlights to create a rich, thick coat of fur in the dog. I'm pretty happy with the color saturation and I'll move on to his other ear. The shadow beneath the fold in his ear will be the darkest. Mm -hmm. 
I want to come back with the very dark plum to add some color to the very inner ear where it'll be a little bit darker. I'll finish blending this area and then we'll move on to the facial features. The shading around his brow will be a darker color. The brow bone is very prominent and will be a lighter shade as light cast upon the surface. I can use the edge of my pastel stick to create some sharper edges around the dog's eyes. I am following the contour of his face and it's bringing out his features and shape around his eyes. I will begin blending his facial fur and you will begin to see how it's transforming his facial features very nicely. I'm using my dark gray pastel pencil to begin shaping his eyebrow and shading some of the fur around his eyes. The blending stump works great for creating a transition between the darkest fur and the lighter areas. I'm using my gray to add some small tufts of hair around his ear and forehead. I'll blend some more of the black fur around the side of his face. This additional blending has really helped shape his face. I now have some good saturation and will be able to add some of the fur details next. I will continue to use my gray pastel for, uh, for details. I will save the white pastel for the final details of the fur. I'm going to clean up around his eyelid and adjust the highlight uh, a little bit and then add some strokes of fur around his eyebrow.
I've switched to my very dark purple to add some color to the dog's fur. We don't want the fur to be just black, but have a combination of colors that blend together well to create color harmony. I am intensifying the pupil area again to match the dark density I have in the rest of his face. I'll add a touch of gray again and I'll come back with my blender to blend this very lightly. I've blended a little bit of the black shade into the dark uh, maroon color to make it a little darker in the corner of his eye. I'm going to add some brown to the corner of his eye to give him a little more color. I've added some gray fur to his brow, but I'm going to come back with my black pastel and add some dark shadows between some of the individual fur groups. I have switched to a light gray to begin adding some individual fur details. He has a light patch of fur along the center of his forehead and along the edges of his face and ears. I have already blocked in most of the dog's nose while paying close attention to the surface highlights reflecting off his nose. I blended some gray on top of his nose and around the nostrils. The darkest black has been applied to the inside corners of his nose that are in the shadows. Now I'd like to begin developing the dog's muzzle. I'm using my dark blue to add some of the markings onto his muzzle. He has several symmetrical little patches where the whiskers on his muzzle uh, come out of. I'm using my dark gray pastel to transition between the black fur to the lighter shades in his muzzle. He has a lot of interesting little patches of color in his muzzle area that I'll continue to develop and also add some more dark shading to his lower jaw. 
it's important to follow the direction of these shapes along his muzzle for they help define and contour his face. Now that I have them blocked in, I can switch to my very light gray to begin adding some light color fur texture to his muzzle. I want to add a little more gray to his jawline and then blend this area to complete this step of completing the muzzle shading. I'm going to reestablish the rows of dots where the whiskers protrude from. I'm just using a very dark shade of blue for this. I am switching to my white pastel pencil to begin adding the white fur to the dog's muzzle. I will work around these patches to bring a white highlight to his face. I'm going to start adding some of the white whiskers that are beneath his lower lip. The white fur stands out very nicely over the gray background. He has some long patches of fur below his cheek that I will add here with my black pastel. I'm trying to create some individual hairs along this area. Next, I, I will come back with my white pastel stick to add some of the individual hairs that are in the cheek area. I'll soften the area a little bit with my blending stump, but then I'm going to come back again with a sharp black pastel pencil to add the shading between some of these individual whiskers and long hairs. I'll continue to add some more finishing details to his face. In this video, I focus on the development of the dog's face, eyes, and muzzle area. But this dog is part of a complete composition uh, of the entire dog's body and a background uh, landscape. In the full-length video, I complete the background of the painting before I add the final details to the fur around the dog's ears and neckline. So here is the dog with the completed background 
and this is the point where I add the finishing fur details around the dog. I am using a very sharp white pastel stick to add these individual fur details. With the background completed, I can add the long whiskers that protrude from the dog's muzzle. With a sharp point, I am overlapping the whiskers over the landscape background. I'll also develop more of the chin whiskers and add some very long whiskers on the left side of his muzzle. I will add some more final fur details, but this completes this demonstration on how to draw dog eyes and muzzle. I hope you have learned a few tips for drawing pet portraits. If you have enjoyed this demonstration, please press like and leave a comment below. Please consider subscribing to my channel and see you next time. Thank you.